topic of our lesson today is the time and cell. We're going to discuss the time and cell. I, it is a very useful tool. Uh, we asked earlier and appears to be that uh, most of you are using it. But I'm going to ask another question again because I see that more people are joining us now. So the next question is, do you use or did you ever set the colors of the time and cell? Earlier I got uh, an answer of approximately 50%. Let's see if I'm going to get the same now when more people are joining. So did you ever change the color? Did you ever play with the, uh, with the colors, change the rules of the time and cell or things like that? And it appears to be like I'm getting the same kind of an answer um, as earlier. 50% of you did, 50% of you did not, a little bit more did set it. Okay, good. So let's talk a little bit about the time and cell. Time and cell is a very important tool for the trader. First, just the basic, why is it called time and sale or time and sales really is a full name why would it be called time and sales it is called so because it displays the sales price and the quantity and the time that it happened so why don't I show it here on this window look at it I'm gonna open it up and it shows so many interesting things which I don't care about. I don't care what the bid is and what the ask is and, and so on because it's all displayed in here of course and I don't even care about the time. So in my opinion as a trader they should have actually called it price and size because that's the only thing I care about. I don't care about the time, I do care about the sales, here they are, I do care about the price of the sale but I don't really care about the time. Why is that? So, it is there for a reason. Not useful for us traders, but it is there for a reason. What's the reason? For example, if you show, first, it shows everything. It shows every transaction that was uh, made in the market, it shows. For example, if you're seeing here number five, five means 500 shares were sold or bought. Of course, if something is sold, then something is bought. What does it mean zero? Zero means that it's the price in between and the bid and the ask. You see this number here? It's in the between the bid and the ask. 176.82. So it's, it was at that time in between the, the bid and the ask. That's why it's white. And that's the color that I chose for this because I'll show you in a minute what you should be using and what color you should be setting. And um, the red color will show something else. The green color will show something else. I'll discuss that in a few seconds. But until then, zero means less than 100 shares. One means 100 shares. Now I can set it up to show me hundreds. I don't need to show, I don't need to see it uh, in one or two or three, like you're seeing here, these are 300 shares and so on. But it's more convenient to, for me to see hundreds. Just like that. That is, for me, more convenient. I don't know about you. So, why do we have the times there? We do have the times because some stocks are not as active as the QQQ, for example. And, well, we don't trade those stocks. For example, if I'm going to click on Roku, okay, which is a stock that uh, a lot of people uh, like to trade. We talked about it today. <laughs> uh, the pet, uh, the teacher's pet of some, uh, of some traders today. So look at, the, look at uh, Roku. Uh, Roku is still running. I mean, you have a lot of transaction going on. But what happens if you have, and I don't even remember the symbols because I don't trade these kind of stocks. What happens if you have a stock that is not really moving or has a very low volume, uh, a few thousands of share per day? Then, since the time and sale holds all the information and you can scroll down and get all the information, since the time and sales has all the information, then with very low volume shares, you can go and you see, okay, at the time 1527, somebody bought 200, 100 shares. Uh, or sold, of course. I mean, you, you, when somebody buys, somebody sells, of course. And then you go... Mm, seven minutes before that, somebody actually bought 100 shares. 
and 20 minutes before the well we do not deal with stocks that have trades every whatever few minutes of course you can also see that on the chart but on the chart you cannot see once you see a green candle or a red candle you don't really know how many shares were traded in that and exactly when for example a five minute candle you don't know if the shares were if, if the shares were purchased at the beginning of the candle or at the end of the candle and so on so but I don't care about it as a trader I don't care about the time because the time's running all the time and I don't have to go back and to see what happens because here every second it clicks every second or less than that depending on the stock that you're watching the symbol you're watching though then it changes so rapidly you don't really need the time so for us as traders we need the price we need the share size we have absolutely no use in the time uh, Adnan says freeze do you guys see everything okay now Adnan do you see okay now do you see that you're good okay fine perfect perfect so it does display the time and sales, but we don't really need it. However, it is a very, very important tool. It depends on our trading system, but every trader needs it. Every trader needs to use it. Now, most traders use the chart. That would be the main tool of the traders. That is wrong. Your main tool is actually here. This is your main tool. Your main tool is a level two, that's your main tool and the time and sale and of course you can look at the chart but as a trader I look more on the level 2 and the time and sales then I look at the chart the chart gives me the idea okay so where the stock is at fine now let's see what's going on in the time and sale let's see what's going on in the level 2 these are more important tools than the chart when you're beginning as a trader the chart is actually your more important tool not because it's the right thing because that's what you think is the right thing when you're beginning so really the right tool for you as traders is a time and sale and level two and less the chart so the chart is important it's great it's very useful of course we need it we, we we need to see the history because this shows us what happens now the chart so shows us what happens in the past and this is also very important but this is what currently is happening and this is and one of the most important tools here here is a time and sell so it shows us the price the size the time which we don't really need and let's talk a little bit about um, the different um, things that um, this could help us with so why do we need it that you know what let's let's start and talk about uh, first let's talk about uh, the colors how do you set up the colors and why are they so important and I'll use uh, a very liquid uh, ETF is here which is of course the QQQ I can use different stocks of course or so on but I'll start with the QQQ so what we're what are we actually seeing here we're seeing the colors change in between red and green not because this is a default because I set it up this way I like it this way do you like it this way I don't know maybe after this lesson you will like it too I saw just 50% just of you played with the colors now let's right click it this window opens up and it shows us our options of setting up the colors now in every training platform you will see approximately the same thing now of course the background your choice above the ask what is above the ask can there be a trade above the ask is that possible so we I can set a color if I'm going to click on that right now I can set the color that will show if a trade was above the ask and yes this is possible sometimes you will see a trade above the ask it could be a dollar above the ask because there are some transactions that are carried out of the market prices and it's real it's possible and it's done not always but when it is you will see a very quick spike for example did you ever see a stock trading like that and all of a sudden you see a huge spike up like one dollar higher did you ever see that guys it happened to you 
So you're going to see a stock trading at the price of 176.84 where it is right now. And all of a sudden you see a huge spike. It sometimes scares you because maybe you short a stock and all of a sudden you see a price trading like $1 higher and you think, wow, there's a huge green candle. I mean, what happened right now? Well, this is a price that is out of the market price. Very soon afterwards, you will see that the candle will not remain with the price above, although it should. I mean, the rules of the candles are that if there is, there is a price, let's assume a dollar higher, then the candle should show it, right? So that was the low of the candle, that was the high of the candle, and the candle should show it. There are prices that are traded outside of the market price. But the broker or actually the provider of the data to the broker because the broker does not uh, control, um, the brokers do, do not control uh, the data. The provider of the data of the broker is actually going to eliminate it. They're going to eliminate it in a way that immediately afterwards, the big tail, topping tail in that case, if it was a dollar higher, for example, will disappear because otherwise if it's left on the chart it will disturb you from watching the real price action that was there yes there was a price over the um, over the price over the uh, the ask yes it could be and of course it could be the same for example below the bid you see below the bid a different color could you could set it set it as a different color do you care about whether there was a transaction above the ask or below the bid, not as a trader. As a trader, that doesn't matter. I don't care about it as a trader. As a trader, this is, hold on a second. As a trader, this means nothing to me. So I'm setting it as the same color. For me, at the bid is red. This is the bid side. These are the buyers, okay? And at the ask, which is that side over here, that's the side of the sellers, that would be green for me. Now again, if you're interested in setting up differently, that's your choice. In the middle, that's the inside bid, it's called the inside bid. Don't ask me why specifically it's called inside bid, it could be called inside ask, but this is the name, really. The name is inside bid, I set it up in white. So look at these transactions here. You see that they have several points, several numbers after the point, like 176, 826, who buys a stock in this price? Well, first, you can't. You cannot buy a stock with extra numbers after the first two. For example, 82, 1, 3, 4, 5, or something like that. You can't. Who does? Institutional traders. They can. That is their advantage. And if the number here shows zero, it means it's below 100, as I mentioned earlier. But look at this. This is in between, and it shows 500 shares. Now, why is that an advantage? For example, with the NASDAQ, which is not very volatile sometimes, depending on when, of course, but it could stay like this for hours, playing in between 82, 83, and 84, something like that. If you are placing an order in between, in the middle between 83 and 84, of course, you'll be the first to get it, right? Because, for example, if I want to buy, if I'm an institutional trader and I want to buy a stock in between the bid and the ask, I'll be the first. If I'm just sitting here on the bid at 83, look at the line. Look at how many people are sitting in, in here in the line, in bit, uh, at the bid and at the ask. So I have to stay in line too. I have no advantage. But if I'm posting an, a, a, a trade, if I'm posting a request, if I want to sell or if I want to buy before these guys, then I can actually use a number in the middle. Well, it also shows you, that is one of the advantages of the time and sale, that there's a lot of, of, of action, of price action, uh, interest from institutional traders. Is that important? Yes, it is important. We talked today about Roku in the trading room. We mentioned Roku. We talked about the fact that uh, there's not a lot of people who are, uh, there's not a lot of uh, institutional traders who are trading Roku. Um, 
well, there are actually, there are, but there's, uh, the, the vast majority of the traders are retail traders, and that's a different, and that is an issue that we, we discussed today in the trading room, we're not going to repeat it now, but the, the basic information, whether there are trades within, in the, what is uh, called um, inside bid, that is also important. So for me, that is in white. But also, it shows me one more thing. If there is a transaction within, then it also means, it also means that there's no pressure on either side. There's no pressure of buyers, there's no pressure of sellers. So if I'm going to see a lot of transactions within the spread, let me show you Tesla, for example, okay? Let me close that. Let me show you Tesla, because Tesla has a spread. Uh, the Qs doesn't really have a spread, I mean, one cent. But look at Tesla. Tesla is spreading now, like uh, eight cents spreads between the bid, 82, and the ask, 87. Now it's five cents. But look at how many trades are being held in between. Look at that. Now, trades that are in between, not a few uh, numbers after the point here, uh, like 88 here, for example, they are not institutional traders. If you're trading equities, which I don't, I trade CFDs, that is an advantage, a huge advantage uh, concerning, uh, concerning uh, liquidity and stuff like that, but it's a disadvantage if I want to trade within the spread. If I want to trade within the spread, which I, I never do, but if I want to trade within the spreads, I have a disadvantage trading CFDs. But some traders, if they would like to trade it within the spread, they can place an order between 76 now and 86 or whatever it is, and they can get filled here, you see? It's in between the spread. They don't have to buy this number or sell that number. When is that an advantage? It is an advantage when the stock is just going sideways, like now, like now. Some traders try to gain from a cent moving up or down one, two, three cents. I, I, I beg you never to try this system unless you're very experienced in doing so, but ma mainly this is uh, uh, people who are adding liquidity, taking liquidity, and trying to make money off commissions. There is such a thing like that when you're trading stocks. But I'm not getting into this because this is something that we're not uh, dealing with, we're not learning this. This was something that was done a long, long time ago very successfully, but... Uh, um, the exchanges hate it and they actually stopped most of uh, most of this activity and most traders who were doing this are no longer traders anymore and it has nothing to do actually with trading it is just trying to buy and sell and make uh, and make money from again from commissions from adding liquidity to the market which is sometimes great but it's not good for the exchanges sometimes depending on of course who and when but basically it's not done as often as it used to be done in the past. So here you can see a lot of trades in between the bid and the ask because the stock is not really moving that much. Let me go back to the QQQ. Now it's gonna be a little bit more clear because the spread here is just one cent. So wh whoever wants to be in the middle has to be an institutional trader and you can see that all trades in the middle have extra numbers after the point, okay? So again, institutional traders are here. Now, as you see, you've seen earlier, I was setting up the colors in a way that above the ask and at the ask, and again, very rare to see something above the ask, so it doesn't really matter, or at the ask would be green, the inside bid is white, and at the bid, or below the bid, would be red. So quite simple, quite simple really. Red below, green above. Why do I do that? The reason I do that is because I want to see the pressure. I want to see the pressure via the color. I want to see the pressure via the color. I'm watching the time and sale, and right now, although, well, I don't see much. For example, right now, the queues are not really moving. But let's just imagine it would start moving all of a sudden. Let's imagine it will spike up right now. What will happen if it's going to spike up right now? You're going to see the greens all over the place. Like kind of now, but it's going to continue. It's going to continue. So you are actually going to be seeing a lot of greens here because the greens in this case are going to show you that there's a lot of pressure of the buyers. What does it mean? 
it means that if the buyers which are here are are trying to buy I mean, I mean okay so if a person wants to uh, if a person wants to sell a stock and he doesn't want to chase it down what would this person do this person is going to use a limit order and place the stock his quantity here at 98 for example let's say you want to sell uh, 100 shares then you can do it in several ways you can click on that number here let's say 98 or below that and actually sell your quantity and sell it at the price of the bid if you're going to sell you're going to get this price right because you're selling at the best price there is and this is the best price there is right now when we are trading in and out as day traders we always click in and out very fast so if I want to get into the queues I don't wait on the bid trying to hope that somebody is going to sell me at 96 I don't do that as a trader if I'm seeing a breakout I'm not going to stay in the bid with a hundred shares hoping that somebody is going to sell me 100 shares no I'm going to the ask and I'm buying from the ask 100 shares that's what I'm going to do as a trader I'm chasing the ask you see it's going up right now I'm not going to stay down here now what does it mean if I'm chasing the ask if I'm chasing the ask if I'm trying to buy the ask that means that I am aggressive I'm trying to buy from the best price there is but I am willing to pay the price that is asked by the sellers so the best seller is here and I'm willing to pay that price so I'm clicking on that number or using a market order doesn't matter and I'm buying at the best price available I don't stay on the bid waiting for somebody to sell me as a trader I'm always in faster if I want to get out I want to get out right now I don't want to get out and wait at the ask especially again when I'm trading CFDs because I have no liquidity issue if I'm if I want to if I when I was trading and I have traded stocks equ equities for a long long time not CFDs and sometimes I would have large quantity I mean maybe not as large as today but sometimes I could have 2,000 shares for example if I have 2,000 shares and I'm trying to sell 2,000 shares sometimes I want to be here on the ask selling 2,000 shares I don't want to chase the bid why because if I'm going to chase the bid with 2,000 shares I'm going to drop the price so fast that I'm going to get 10 cents below now of course that wouldn't happen with the QQQ but if you do that with another stock maybe even Tesla you will drop down the price by several cents down it could be 10 or even 20 cents down so I will not be chasing the bid or the ask with equities large size I could do that with 100 shares maybe up to 400 shares but I cannot do it with more so when you're trading equities you do want to set your orders at the ask sometimes some of the order so if I have 2,000 shares for example I'll try and sell 200 another 400 another 300 another 400 depending on the quantities that I see here that's a different game I don't have this issue anymore I'm working with CFDs unlimited liquidity but I'm just talking to those of you who are <laughs> sadly trading equities so just joking whatever you feel like so the thing is if there's a pressure on the sell, if there's a buyer pressure, it's going to show in green. What do you see now? Do you see the seller's pressure? Look. There was a seller pressure right now. If I'll go down, look at the number of red executions that we have. Look at the number. Now, well, it still is in a... I mean, I'm watching the chart. It's not really going anywhere. But for a second there, you could have seen you could have seen a seller pressure by showing a lot of red transactions just like you see now so who is winning right now is it the buyers are in the driver's seat or the sellers are in the driver's seat now of course it changes very rapidly so it doesn't mean anything when the stock is just going sideways it doesn't really mean anything so just imagine you're seeing something uh, again red means sellers pressure green mid uh, means buyer pressure white means nothing because it's in the middle it's institutional traders they're just waiting to get filled just just waiting to get filled and they're not 
they're not showing any pressure really. They're not showing any pressure. So what is more important is the red and the green, but also when you see uh, a lot of institutional traders, that also matters. So always watch the colors, always watch the green, always watch the red. That is the most important thing about time and sale, to see the buyer's pressure and the seller's pressure, but it's not the last thing. There's more things that we need to talk about. Okay, so what do I do really with this color? Well, I'm more concentrating on the level two really. Now, there's not a lot of to concentrate when you're watching the cues, but when you're watching, let's go back to Tesla here, okay? So here's Tesla, and again, it's not at the point that it's really making a big move right now, but let's say I want to short it right here. I, I, I don't think it looks like a... a, a good trade but let's just assume I want to short it here so I'm watching the level 2 and I'm watching the sellers pressure here I'm watching the buyers how many sellers do I have how many different sellers do I have did you see that we had a lot of different sellers at 67 now we move to 64 now we move to 62 earlier you see a lot of now we have a lot of sellers at 62 look at the different sellers and we move down another cent look when there's a lot of different sellers when there's a lot of different sellers, at the same price, we're moving down. Now I'm watching the buyers. I see quite, not, not really a lot of buyers, just two different buyers with the quantity. And then again, a lot of sellers. Is that changing now? Possibly. But from 60 something to 40 something, you could have seen the pressure here. The pressure of the buyers, the pressure of the sellers. Why do I place the level 2 here, just beside it? The reason I place, I place the level 2 just beside it here is to watch the colors. I'm not actually watching the level 2 at all times. I'm watching the... Uh, sorry, I am watching the level 2 at all times. I'm not always watching the time and sale unless I want to see something very specific. So what I am doing is I'm watching the colors at time sale. So the colors really affecting my mind because I'm watching, I'm really watching right there. I'm watching the level two. I'm concentrating on the level two because it's much more important than the chart. And then on the side of my eyes, I'm looking at the colors of the time and sale. So right now, look, white means nothing, nothing. Nothing. It's not going to move. It's not going to move. It's not going to move. It's white. It's white. No pressure. Look, it's kind of dead. It's kind of dead. Some red transactions are coming in. Still white. So again, I'm watching the colors and I'm looking at buyer's pressure, seller's pressure. It's very, very important to notice that. And I do that via the colors when especially when i see a lot of colors changing so when there's a big pressure to the downside look like now you see going you're going to see a lot of red colors and of course look at the whites and then where there's a green pressure you're going to see the stock moving up so it's very important to concentrate on the level two it's much more important than the chart and it's important to catch the colors on the side of your eyes and to understand the colors but as i mentioned earlier that's not the only thing i'm watching that's not the only thing i'm watching so now comes another important issue about the time and sales um show us the config of time and sales that's it what i showed you nothing else the colors attila <coughs> okay by the way you can do the same thing here by moving uh, and seeing on the left the colors yeah Cl right click here and you open it up and you just change the color for example if I want the color of the ask to be different I don't know pick up a color I'm gonna click it and it's gonna change and I'm gonna click OK for me that's fine right now I just right clicked it and this window opened I'm changing the colors and I'm clicking OK that's it I don't personally use that, uh, Melvin, but I don't know, maybe that's something you should consider. Okay then, so what is the next important thing about, um, about the time and sale? We talked about uh, the price, which is of course important, and uh, well, I didn't really talk much about it, but look at the numbers here. For example, 15 means 
means one one thousand five hundred shares okay fifteen hundred shares okay that's what the number means here so it's not only the price and the color it's also how many shares are being traded that is in my opinion very important but it's a little bit hard to notice sometimes you see a large a very large size displayed here which is also very important because usually institutional traders are buying in bulks and when they buy a lot of shares at once then that means that there's an interest from institutional traders but it's quite rare to see that nowadays because they don't really like to show you that so they're buying right uh, I mean it used to be in the past you would see more of that like all of a sudden 100,000 shares I mean who buys 100,000 shares in one click of a button they can sometimes depending on the volatile on the volume of the stock that they're trading and so on but they don't usually show that because they don't want you to see that they're buying you can see that through the um, white numbers here and again the ones that are over the point but usually they don't show you that anymore so that was something we were using more in the past we don't usually use that anymore so the numbers is imp are important uh, and um, and the price is important and the green and the red uh, color is important but there's one more important thing the last thing which in my opinion is very very important is quick volume changes quick volume changes for example i'm watching tesla now moving up let's say i'm considering going long right now is there a lot of volume in this pullback right now in this green candle right now well i will know it when the five minutes are all over and then i will see what is the volume i mean i can already see the volume and it is quite large you see that it is quite large so right now I do see that a lot of volume is getting into Tesla as it's moving up but sometimes it's very very hard to see that because uh, usually you, you would see them all in the same level or close to the same level so right now we're seeing that very clearly but it is possible that on a certain candle for example look at this green candle over here you see the price moved up quite a lot much more than this price over here than this candle over here the price moved up much more than this candle and look at the volume it's actually smaller you see the volume is smaller so let's assume you're trading the stock Tesla right here in this green candle and you're thinking about going long because maybe it's up trending whatever reason I don't see a reason to buy it but really let's just assume you did that so if you're thinking about going Tesla here you want that to happen with high volume you want it I mean high volume is a confirmation for the direction of the stock that you're trading it is a confirmation meaning if a lot of people are interested in doing the same thing you're doing then probably you're doing the right thing if more and more people are coming in and buying it then probably it's going to continue higher probably you have a winning trade but you can only see usually you can only see the result after the candle is over or throughout the time that the candle is developing now for example if you go back to this candle which finally didn't show us anything it's more like a dodgy here now you can see that yes there was high volume but nothing happened here now let's assume I'm trading this candle I can actually tell you well I can't but I'm, I'm just you know thinking about what could have happened let's let's talk about an example something that could have happened in this green candle that you're seeing here what could have happened what could have happened is that you're thinking about going long and let's say you went long over here and all of a sudden you see a lot of volume coming in how can you see a lot of volume coming in you can't because the candle size is approximately the same let's assume you had a winning trade let's assume it continued to move higher so you're watching this candle here and you 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 don't see any real change here on the volume but actually you do see it here look at the speed that the transactions go okay so here I can see the volume in the time and sale I can see the volume of the trade the trades I can see the volume in a very short limited time frame for example if the numbers here are running really fast I'm gonna see that live in the next 10 seconds I don't want need to watch a five-minute candle 
I don't need to watch a one minute candle. I want to see it right now. When I'm clicking the button, I want to see the, run, the numbers here running like crazy. Like if I'm shorting it right now, look, it just moved down a bit. And maybe it's going to continue now. And look, as it moves down, you may see some fear. You may see some uh, price action here. I actually see the price. I actually see now the speed is, is ex excel the acceleration of the speed right now. I do. A bit. Not much. But I do see some acceleration here. I mean, more transactions are coming in. Now, you have to notice this very, very carefully. It's not some, sometimes it's very clear. Sometimes look at the numbers running around faster. Look at them. They do run faster. You see, the stock is coming down. Greed is working. And the price is coming down. And now it cooled back a little bit. Now it cooled back a little bit. Okay? Maybe it's going to continue. It cooled back. And what was the result? It went up 10 cents. Now it may continue again. But... You watch the level two, you watch the chart to understand where the stock is coming or going from. Of course, you start with this chart, but then you walk to the you, you go to the level two, you make your decisions according to the level two, but always you look at the number at, at the colors here and the speed. Look, the speed is it's accelerating now. You see? There's an acceleration and there's more trades are coming in. So you look at the speed, the speed tells you more volume as it comes down. Look, 290 now, 290 whole number, it should hold here a little bit. And also very interesting, again, watch the buyers, watch the sellers, look at the number of buyers, look at the number of sellers, and look at how many transactions are being carried out at the whole number. For example, and that's a good, another good example, it comes down to the whole number now. Sometimes you don't see all the buyers at 290. It's a whole number you expect to have a lot of buyers. Sometimes you, s you do see a lot of buyers. Look, there's a large number of buyers. But sometimes it holds to that number. Now it came down. Sometimes it holds to that number a long time. And you will only see that it's hitting the buyers on the, on the, on the time and sale. So you're going to see a lot of transactions at 290. There's, there's going to be like a zillion transactions at 290, but the, the price doesn't come down. Now it did come down. We could actually see that when the volume was accelerating here, uh, the speed was accelerating here. So we, we seen the whole number and we seen it coming under the whole number and at the whole number, it could stuck for an hour. How? How come it will start now the trading uh, session is over, we're done, <laughs> market is closed at this second, that was the bell, um, if you heard that. Uh, so what we did see there is we saw the, 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 the price coming to 290 and it could hold there for a long, long time, but the only way to see that there's a seller's pressure is not by the level two, because a buyer may show you the same number of shares. For example, if you have a big buyer here, there was 43 there earlier. If you go to this video, I'm going to post it later. If you go to this video, you will see that there was a big buyer at the number of 43 hundreds. There was a big buyer at 43 hundreds at 290. He was erased, we came down. But at that time, if this buyer would have insisted on continuing to buy, at 290, look, the buyers now are back to 290. If the buyer, if this specific buyer wanted to stay at 290, what would have happened is that he would keep on showing you the same number, 4,300. If he would be buying, he would, if, if, he, if he bought something, he would raise the number. So it could be an institution trader who want to buy not 4,300 shares. He want to buy a few hundred thousand possibly. So he does not want to show you the whole quantity. He want to show you just 4,300. But the price stays and the stock doesn't come down. Well, it did, but let's just assume. It happens a lot of time. Let's just assume it does not come down under 290. Then what happens is that you see 290 here. And the only way to see that the sellers are still aggressive is the time and sale. Because here, you're going to see a lot of red transactions at 290, and you will know that there's a good chance that they're going to eliminate the buyer and come down under 290. But then you watch the buyer and you see the same number all the time, 43. I mean, why is there 43? Because he has an automatic system, a computer that actually uploads the number again and again and again and again. He always wants to show you the number. He doesn't want to show you 200,000 shares because if you're going to see that, you're going to get scared away and you will not 
sell to him and he's a buyer he wants to buy so maybe he has such a big quantity and it does happen that way that's why sometimes stocks are getting stuck at whole numbers and are not moving down anymore so they came down to the whole number it stayed at the whole number and then sometimes well the buyers win does it happen all the time no but you can see that only through the time and sale you can't really see that on the level two on the level two you see the same the same number so in fact the time and sale and the level two they are integrated within together that's why i keep them side by side that's why i always watch them i do watch the level two more but i always glimpse a look to the time and sale to understand what's going on to understand the direction that we're taking and to understand to get, to get more information. The, the more we get information, the, the, the more successful we are. And that was my lesson. That's it. And um, I guess there are some questions here. So let me see if you do have any questions and we'll answer that. We do have a question from Greg. The time is sale only displays by the limit orders, right? No. Market orders too. Everything. Every transaction in the market it shows. You can see, of course, market orders, absolutely, you do. Every market order that's going to be in the market, let's say you sell, is going to be according to the numbers here. Of course you will. Now, you know, I, I, um, I actually thought about whether to give this lesson at all, because it sounds so trivial. Of course, I mean, most of you are using time and sale. Um, Earlier, when I asked, 90% uh, of you were using time and sale. I mean, <laughs> what with the 10%? Well, that's a problem. But um, you should be using time and sale. It's kind of trivial, right? No, it's not. It's more than that. Set up the colors. Watch the numbers. Watch the pressure. Watch the speed. Always glimpse a look. Take a look at uh, what's going on there have an understanding of what's, what's going on. Is this a 4K monitor? I, 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 what I'm using here? I actually don't know. You want to see what kind of monitor I'm using? Let me take the camera. It's one of these huge monitors. See that? That's a, cam that's a monitor I'm using. So it's connected to my laptop. And it's one of these big monitors. I don't know if it's a 4K or whatever. Any more questions? Can you please check your colors? Uh, bid is green and ask is red. No, no. For me, you know what, Dan, it's, 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 it's what works better for you. For me, green works like ask green and bid is red. Why? Because I want to see green when there's a buyer's pressure, when people are buying at the ask, when people are done, when people are buying at the ask, are chasing the price up, they will buy at the ask, I want to see that in green. When people are selling at the bid, I want to see that in red. No, it doesn't cost eight grand. It cost me 950 euros. That's like uh, maybe $1,100. Talking about the monitor. I have a question here from Philip. I see you have trouble finding winners in the afternoon. You have trouble finding winners in the afternoon, losing money in the afternoon. It's always harder to trade in the afternoon. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> Finding good risk reward is harder. Uh, you, well, you know, Philip, that's a kind of question. Let's discuss this in the trading room when we have some time. I mean, we, we, we do concentrate here on a different issue. So I, I don't want to keep the, the guys here for that, you know. Uh, when you have a big spread, it doesn't help you that much, Zarko. It does not help you that much, but we depends. You know, let me say this, Zarko. If 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 there's a stock, and we do trade sometimes stocks which have a large spread, but 
only when they have also a very fast momentum. So with, when it has a, 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 a large spread and you still see the red color and the green color, then you see the momentum and then you look at the colors. And yes, it helps you. But when the stock with large spread is kind of stuck and not going anywhere, doesn't help you. Well, first, don't trade these stocks. <laughs> I mean, you never saw me trade a stock like that that is just going sideways, especially if it has high spreads. Okay, now there, there are several systems to trade the afternoon chart, just that we did not go through this right now. Uh, guys, I want to thank you very much for being here with me today. It was um, a pleasure. Uh, thank you very much. And um, see you next time. Um, so the level 2 only displays limit orders or both. Oh, you're talking about what you're seeing here. Yes, only limit orders. Absolutely. You don't see market orders here on the level 2. Absolutely not. You just Somebody sets an order and you see it on the level 2. When, when there's a market order, it's always executed, of course, because it's market order. Yeah. The white color, Adnan, I mentioned earlier, it's in between. So if you have a transaction in between like this one, okay, 290.13, it's in between this price, the bid, and the ask price, okay? It's in between. I just set it up this way. You're probably late for the lesson today, I guess. So if the momentum of the stock is down, the time and sell color should be mostly red. Yes, if you set it up like I do, Victor, yes, absolutely true. Well, that's it, traders. Thank you very much. And, well, see you tomorrow in the trading room, of course. Bye, traders. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to join the TradeNet trading room for a free 14-day trial. Traded has educated more than 30,000 professional traders worldwide since 2004 and its trading room is one of the world's leading trading communities. Click here to start your free trial. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.